Okay, we'll watch a Mr. Ballin. We could do a Mr. Ballin. First creature in the woods. I'll just type it. No, not Mr. Beast. Dude, chat, can we all agree that Mr. Ballin is the new Mr. Beast? Dude, what is it called? Stop it! I declare! Stop! Top one, is it this? There's a good reason why. Okay. Stop! I command thee! Cease at once! Are you done? Did you have your fun? Did you have your fun? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, let's just let's just let's just watch Doctor. You know, honestly, yeah, let's just watch Doctor Disrespect stream. Let's just do. Let's just watch someone else's stream. I'll just watch his stream. Why not? He's not even live. Does he still get good viewership for being on YouTube? I almost feel bad for him because, like, he kind of, like, I, I don't know, he might still be doing good, but, like, he's kind of, like, just out of, you know, out of the realm, if that makes sense. Don't talk about him? Why? Don't tell me what to do. It's my stream. I can talk about who I want. It's forbidden in the Twitch rules. Dude, I still I still want to know. Dude, I feel like it's a conspiracy. I feel like I feel like Dr. Disrespect knows exactly why he was banned, but he doesn't want to tell anybody. <coughs> it probably has to do with the Shungite. And the 5G. Why so many movies that are designed to be scary are strange, they usually are gets like 15k. Oh, that's pretty good. Really, the woods at night. And if you go even further, most of them are like a cabin in the woods at night, right? It's because being in the woods at night as human Dude, he has short hair. Beings checks a lot of fear boxes. You have the isolation factor. You're far away from society. That scares us. We don't want to Yep, be I do not like the forest. He, more he vulnerable relates to that me. Way. You know, it checks the, the darkness fear factor. As humans, we're mostly afraid of the dark. Because you don't know what's around you or what's looking at you. You know, you don't have the advantage of... You know, city lights beaming in. You're kind of probably removed. I need my from ball and cap. Lots of light pollution. Oh no, it's so upstairs. You're kind of like in total darkness. And I think I the third upstairs. fear check in the box would be the fact that it's easy to hide in the forest. You don't know what's watching you because there's trees everywhere. You have animals, predators potentially, or even predatory humans that could be hiding at every turn. Hollywood has picked up on that and made <clears> bunches <throat> of movies. There's some stupid reason saying what he thinks is best to get everyone else to find out that he doesn't break his disclosure thing, but probably not, I don't know. See, what I think happened is Twitch is like, hey, you can't uh, say that stuff on our platform. And then Dr. Disrespect's like, I'm going to say what I want. It's my stream. And then they're like, okay, well, we'll ban you. And he's like, fine. And then uh, they came to an agreement that that he would leave and uh just not say why and twitch won't say why they let and it's an agreement dude let's be real like dr disrespect and twitch came to an agreement because they don't speak of it and neither does dr disrespect so they both know what happened but they're just not going to say anything because obviously if dr disrespect actually was wrongly kicked off of twitch there would be a huge lawsuit you know, there, there would be a very big lawsuit. 
but there isn't. So that's safe to assume that he, they came to an agreement. All right. All right, Mr. Ballin, I assume he's, he's passed his intro Happen by now. In this cabin in the woods. I, I imagine myself being in this guy's position and thinking about the psychological state, but having been through something like that, I was able to put myself in this guy's position and this story terrifies me. So as you're listening to today's story, try to put yourself in this guy's position and, and think Dude, to yourself, I hate forests you and woods. But before we get into today's at story, night at least. if this During type the day, of I don't content care. But at night, the kind I don't of like it. strange, dark, and mysterious that I'm going to deliver to you in a super close family. And one of the things that they like to do as a family was they owned a cabin. It was around Mount Bachelor in Oregon. This beautiful mountain where you can go snowboarding. Dude, let's be real though. Like every scary story that is true, every mystery, every random death or random scary thing that happens is always in the woods, guys. It's always in the woods. You know? Boarding and skiing. They had this family cabin up there. I don't mind the, the woods time, during the day, but when it gets dark, a lot of time it's like now. no. They would go up there as a family, spend time there as a family. It was this, this wonderful retreat. And as they're trying to settle the estate of their husband, their father, they're trying to figure out what they want to do with this cabin. Because all of a sudden, this place that, you know, used to bring them so much joy and was a place of very fond memories suddenly felt kind of hollow. You know, it just would never be the same. And so they decided that they were actually going to sell this cabin. Um, and the 17 year old boy was just really upset about this. You know, it's he, he was very close to his father. He had some yeah, very cabins fun too. memories of going cabins hunting, are sussy. Skiing, snowboarding with his dad at this cabin. The monster stuck so disrespect. Once the cabin was actually put up for sale by this goes up to the door. Boom! <laughs> Dude, you know those videos of a, uh, of a, uh, um, like the um oh my god what's his name uh dr phil like knocking at the door like that shit they should make that with dr disrespect let me find that video real quick i know this is off topic amy shut up i know open the door or i'm gonna throw rocks through your windows you dumb whore I want the money. Uh, I'll raise enough <laughs> hell till you give this it. This is what it made me think of when you said Dr. Disrespect. And give it to me. <laughs> Go kill yourself. Nobody likes you. Go kill yourself. Everybody hates Nobody you. You would be better off dead. You. Just go kill yourself. Dude, he's, he's in the house, chat. He's in the house. You're not helping me much. And if you don't help me much, I can't help you. <laughs> Open the door, you dumb whore. boy's mother, he asked if, you know, <clears throat> before they actually sell it, could he spend some time up there? I guess paying his respects in a way to, to his father. But he just wanted one more opportunity to to spend some time in that cabin and his mom said go for it you know take as many days as you want go up and hang out in the cabin uh but when you come back we are going to sell the place so his father had actually willed to his son his vehicle and so the 17 year old was kind of scary not gonna lie car. uh he goes out and he buys some snacks and drinks heads up to the cabin in oregon with the family dog whose name was midnight and his plan was just to go up to this cabin and basically dude this is literally a horror movie setting a 17 year old kid with his dog by himself goes out to a cabin after his dad passed recently this is this is the setup of a horror movie try to enjoy <clears throat> being in this space one last time don't think about it as this place that now has no meaning because his father had died, but rather a place that he wanted one last positive memory before it was forever gone from their family. And so he gets up there, makes his way to the cabin, and he settles in for what turned out to be an abbreviated stay at the cabin. So in order to understand this story, we need to talk a little bit about the layout of the cabin itself. The, the cabin was two stories. 
and it was built whose name was it. midnight was what happened to the dog no don't don't do that to me don't imply the dog's gonna die a no mountain, mountain bachelor in oregon <clears throat> and so the back half of the cabin was kind of settled into the mountain so there were no windows save a little sliver of window that fed into the the bathroom actually in the back of the cabin the front of the cabin uh, was this gun ain't gonna do shit you know, Dr. Phil. double decker cabin true with, uh, you know windows on the second floor that fed into the master bedroom on the second floor there was a walk out balcony that kind of jutted out a few feet from the second deck the first floor you could see in through with all these beautiful windows there was a sitting area like a living room and a tv and then a small kitchen as well so yeah, the that cabin is a nice was looking built cabin. in an area that was heavily forested <clears throat> so they had to clear out you know, a bunch of trees to even build this cabin when the family had this built years and years ago. And so they really only cleared Yo, away the front They had it built and they're selling it? I wouldn't so that sell that. A clear shot to the house, but the sides and the back were very heavily forested with these huge tall pine trees. I guess if they um, needed money. And they basically had this little tiny driveway that fed in through all the trees and you had this one kind of clearing in front of the cabin. So if you were on the second floor of the cabin where there's the master bedroom, there's a bed up there, and you were looking out that window, you'd be looking over the balcony out into a clearing, basically. But there's a tree line, you know, 100 yards past that clearing that's very dense. And there's actually a couple of trees, fairly fairly prominent trees, that are sitting in front of the cabin that they did not cut down. One of which, for, for the story, we'll call it the sitting tree. Parallel to the ground, about 20 feet up, was this beautiful branch that looked perfect for a whole bunch of people sitting on it but it was 20 feet above the ground and there wasn't really any way to climb up to it and, and no one was trying to climb this tree. But there's this tree that basically has a, a seat, if you will, like the branch is like a seat that is looking <clears> directly <throat> into the cabin. And that's gonna matter later in the story. So uh, clearing in front of the cabin with this uh, one. Oh, I don't like that he said that, Matt. I don't like that he said that that's gonna matter later on in the story. A seat that looks directly at the window of the building yeah i wonder i wonder if he's gonna look out and see something that he don't want to see i don't know it's it's doc it's the doc dude dr disrespect sitting there hey it's the two time it's the two time dr phil just sitting there get out of the house you dumb whore let me help you. One kind of sitting tree and then a very dense forest, 360 Let me degrees in, you beyond you know, that one clearing. So when the 17 year old gets to the cabin, he goes inside, he puts <clears> his <throat> drinks in the fridge, puts his snacks on the counter. He hooks up his PlayStation Bruh. to the TV and he's just like, like having a great time. His, his dog Midnight is roaming around, enjoying being at the cabin. And you know, he's having a great time. And over the course of the first two days that he was there, it was everything he hoped it would be. It was it was like he was bonding with his father one last time. It was a peaceful time that he was there. He was happy to be there. Uh, and he was just enjoying himself, eating snacks and playing video games for a couple of days. He actually left a couple of times to go snowboarding too. Um, but on the third day that he was there, <clears throat> things started to get pretty weird. So on the third day when he got up, uh, it had snowed dramatically the night before. A couple of feet of snow on the ground, still snowing pretty heavily. And he's like, you know, I just don't feel like brushing off my car and trying to go to the store or go to the slopes to go snowboarding. I'm just gonna basically be shut in for the day. And he was excited about it. He's like, great, me and my dog Midnight can bomb around the inside and play some more video games and eat some more snacks and do whatever. Midday sure, that'd that be day, pretty epic. Midnight needed to <laughs> pee, so he went outside with Midnight and let, let Midnight run around and go to the bathroom. No. And while no. he's out there with his dog, he notices there are some footprints in the snow that looked relatively fresh. And this is the first time that he's left his cabin that day, so they aren't his. And his neighbors were pretty far away, and he figured that they were they were older, that they were probably not gonna be trekking around the woods. Uh, so he's thinking to himself, I wonder who made these footprints. And he's looking at them, and they, they started in the woods. So the woods are not that far away from where he is. He's in a relatively small clearing just in front of his cabin. But uh, he can tell these fresh footprints have come out of the woods and they're basically right in front of this clearing and he notices that they bank around and go to the back of his cabin and kind of go up onto the mountain and he kind of just starts walking and following the footprints a bit and they kind of disappear up onto the mountain behind his cabin and he's he's not overly concerned or anything but he definitely takes note like? that more than likely somebody was walking around his cabin 
Maybe it was someone who got lost. Maybe it was a neighbor. I mean, he's rationalizing it. He's thinking, you know what? It, it can't have been anything too serious. Obviously they didn't knock on my door. They didn't need anything. And so he, he kind of writes it off. So that night he stays up late playing video games and his dog is sleeping next to his chair. And at some point he's tired and he wants to go to bed. So he draws all the curtains. So blackout curtains around the downstairs, shuts like all this. the blinds, uh, like and locks this. all the windows, all the <clears throat> doors and heads upstairs to the, the lofted second floor where the master bedroom is. He you know, gets in bed, turns off all the lights, everything's locked, everything's shut, the dog climbs into bed and the dog would sleep up near his head. And suddenly the dog jumps up, still on the bed, and looks at the stairs leading downstairs to the front door. And uh. its ears are perked up like it, it's heard something. And it wasn't unusual for the dog to be a little jumpy, you know, maybe it heard something. He wasn't overtly concerned. But when midnight, the dog jumps off the bed and sprints downstairs after having this sudden alertness. And he's listening, now he is a little bit worried. He's thinking, well, I, I saw footsteps yesterday walking around my cabin, and now it's the middle of the night and my dog is downstairs acting like it was Doc's music. And he hears the Give dog me midnight love. pacing around the downstairs. Like It was just like, like, it's just like, like very reverberated and distorted. It's like on an old record player playing a doc, Dr. Disrespect song. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Every indication is the dog wants to go outside. That's that's the noises that he's he's picking up <clears> that <throat> signal from the dog. And so finally, even though he's feeling a little bit unnerved by this, he decides to go down and see what Midnight wants. And so Midnight is by the door. Dude, he's turn on every light, bro. Like I would be, first of all, the fact that he goes to sleep in the middle of the woods with all the lights off, that would, no, I, w I wouldn't even do that. I would, every light would be on, bro. Like, I would not, no, I would, no, no. He thinks, you know what, she just needs to go to the bathroom. And so he opens the door no. at midnight and he goes outside and he expects his dog to pee. But midnight doesn't need to pee. Midnight starts kind of stalking around the corner and looking out across the clearing towards the sitting tree in that direction. And it just stops. And it's looking at something very intently, as if it spotted an animal or something. In it the looked woods. exactly like and that. So the boy is looking at the dog, and he's kind of trying to encourage the dog to to do its business, so they can go back in the in the cabin. And he's starting to feel really uncomfortable. He's looking around. He's thinking like, okay, I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm a little it's bit Dr. concerned Phil. now. And he's sensing that midnight is going at some point to try to take off after whatever she sees in the woods. Did the dog so better not? Preemptively, he grabs die. midnight and says, "All right." drags midnight back in the house and shuts the door and locks it and takes one last look out the the window of the door and just kind of looks out i mean it's dark it isn't a light or anything and he's like man that's creepy locks it shuts the blinds confirms everything downstairs is locked you know does a sanity check to make sure everything is locked and goes back upstairs with midnight midnight did not want to go back upstairs he had to practically drag her back upstairs dude why would you try to go back to sleep bro stay up all dude i would literally be like on heavy alert with with like with i mean i'm sure he's out in the cabin i'm sure he probably has like a shotgun or some shit i'd just be sitting by the door like i i would be on a heavy alert at that point dude oh my god yeah i, I would just be gaming dude i would stay up all night fuck that and then when they did get back in bed, Midnight refused to get in bed, but instead just starts to hear it's out of my hands. It's out of my hands. And then down at the stairs, Midnight wanted to go back outside. So he's laying there in bed and he's taking full stock of the fact that his dog is very much on edge, but he's trying to fall back asleep, trying to convince himself that nothing weird is going on. And after about 30 minutes of that and being unsuccessful at falling asleep, as he's laying there, it's silent and all of a sudden he hears footsteps on his roof. Now the roof is right above his head. I mean, he's on the second floor. There is no attic. The roof is right there. And he hears about six footsteps. And he actually described it as, as something with hooves. And his dog Bro. instantly looks up as well. And they're both watching the ceiling as what sounds like hooves walking along the roof of this cabin. It's and Santa. It so distinctive that immediately what he's thinking to himself is, how could a deer or a moose or something get on the roof of the house? There is no way, unless you like leapt from a tree or had a ladder for you to get on the roof. 
And how did we not hear if they leapt from a tree? A bunch of experienced hikers in Russia died under really weird circumstances. I'm pretty sure I watched that. Is it that one where, uh, where like they died like from a random ass virus or something? Yeah, the nerve gas thing. They were doing a hiking expedition. All of a sudden, all of them ended dying and really weird. Yeah, it, it wasn't it like they started like foaming at the mouth and like slamming their head on rocks and stuff and like dying like that. That's the one you're talking about, right? Or a ladder even. How didn't we hear a loud slamming sound when they first landed on the roof? Like it's as if they've been there for a while and we just didn't know. And so then the footsteps stop. And at this point, the dog stops looking at the roof and goes right to the balcony, which is shut. There's a door shut to the balcony and there's curtains drawn against the balcony. So he can't see what's out there. And so the 17 year old boy is sitting in his bed and he's like, oh, I don't want to see what's on the porch. And he even says in his write up about this, that he's like, you know, I'm a pretty tough guy, but I'm in the middle of the woods in the middle of the night, totally isolated. Like, I almost don't want to know what's going on outside. I just want to pretend it's not happening. But dude, I'm telling you, like, the woods and high, like, there's just weird shit, dude. The woods are fucking weird, At dude. At some point, he musters the courage to I don't, go I don't, out. I, on the I couldn't do it. So he I walks couldn't over do it. Very timidly to the I door. I could not do it. And midnight's there, ready to go outside. He takes a deep breath and he slides open the blackout curtains, but there's no light outside and there's no light inside. So it's just kind of darkness. And he can barely make out even just the snow that's on the balcony right in front of him. He takes a deep breath and he unlocks the door and he opens it up. And the first thing he does is he turns and he looks up at the roof to see if there's a deer or a moose or something on the roof. It's there's a flying reindeer at Santa Claus. He's peering around and he can't even see footprints up there. So in a way he's kind of relieved, right? Like I, I must've been imagining that. He had a flashlight. And so at this point he's looking back at his roof of his cabin and he shines the light real quick and it's totally dark out, right? So this light goes very far and he sees nothing. And the dog at this point, he can hear the dog making kind of some commotion below him. It's angling itself to look out in the direction of the sitting tree and out towards that tree line where the dog had nope. originally nope. Been fixated on something. Dude. Oh, dude, it sucks because like the, I, I always have this fear. I always had this fear that if I'm, because I, you know, we're this, I'm in the basement right now. Like I have a pretty large basement, but it's mostly like just concrete. And uh, like we have a door to the basement. I always had this fear that I'm going to be sleeping upstairs and then hear something in the basement. And then I'm like, God damn it. Cause I'm like, I, I either have to go look or just like, just, I, I have to go look. That's the thing. It's like, I, honestly, I feel like if I was in this position, I probably would, I probably would do the same thing as him. I probably would look. Because like, the thing is, is if there is a noise downstairs, like, I have to know what it is. You know, I can't just, like, ignore it. Take a look behind you. No. I'm too scared. But, it's, it, yeah, it's probably just Johnny. But I'm saying, like, that that would be, a, the, I hate that. I hate that I would have to look. In the tree line. And so, just doing his diligence, the 17-year-old scans from the top of the roof where he sees nothing. He starts scanning over to the side of the house. Right, like this is the direction of the sitting tree. Yeah, he's get a bat. Over here. And he's looking, he's scanning the tree line, just looking for anything that might I need have been a bat on the roof. For this type and of he's shit. Looking, and he's looking and he's looking and then he gets to the sitting tree. And his flashlight stops on a man crouched on that perch, 20 feet off the ground on the sitting tree, who looked very tall. He had his hands holding onto the branch. That's exactly right what it looks like, chat. Open. And he's holding onto the branch and he's looking directly at the boy unblinking, 100% focused on him. He's less than 50 yards away from him at this point. Amy, just, just type in, took type second, in her name. 17 year old to register what his the flashlight search bar. was pointed at. It. And he panics and he drops it. And the dog reacts to the drop fla flashlight too. And because he's alone out here, he needs to protect himself. You so can just scoops make a new email to her. And he shines it one more time to see like, holy cow, like what did I just see? And this, the guy on the branch is now gone. And he scans the ground, there's nothing. And he's terrified at this point. So he grabs his dog, throws Midnight back into the into the cabin, 
runs back in, shuts the door, locks it, closes the blinds, turns off his light, and literally gets back in bed with his dog, and he's now basically cowering on the bed. In bed, bro, no. No, not in bed. Excuse me, no. Turn on every single light and be on high alert. Don't hide in a bed. So at this point, they're sitting on the bed. <coughs> Midnight is no longer acting That is like true. Blankets are the, I think the strongest shield. Potentially on the, on the paranoia. Okay. At this point, the boy and his dog are sitting on the bed and they're- Wait, was that an editing mistake? Now basically cowering on the bed. So at this point, they're sitting on the bed. Midnight is no longer acting like she wants to go outside. I think she's picking up potentially on the, on the paranoia. Okay. At this- Yep. Dude, we caught him. We caught him. We caught him in 4K editing error. Point, the boy and his dog. Someone else makes edit editing errors like me. They're both scared at this point. Midnight, you know, was fearsome while she was outside, but now that she's back inside, she doesn't want to go near the door either. She's she's rubbing up against him. She doesn't want to go anywhere. And they're sitting there, and the boy, all he's thinking to himself is, "Did I really just see that? It looked like an unnaturally tall man. How did he get in the tree? That's 20 feet off the ground." You know, there's no way to get up into the tree. And why was it sitting there with its mouth open, staring at me? And who was on the roof? Was anything on the roof? And if this thing can get 20 feet up into a, into a tree, it certainly can get on the roof of my, my cabin, I would imagine. But what was it? So he's having this type of thought process and he's realizing the that's true. the dock is pretty tall late in the night. And he, he can jump pretty high. Until the sun's gonna come up. And as he's basically panicking and feeding off his own paranoia and it's getting worse and worse by the second, he hears tapping on the door, on the front door of his cabin. Fuck that, and dude. His heart sinks, and he and his dog kind of look in the direction of the tapping, and he knows he's not going to go open the door. He knows the door is locked. He knows everything is locked. He's panicking that maybe it wasn't, but he knows he locked it, and the tapping just sounds like a finger tapping on the window. And at some point, the tapping stops, and he thinks, okay, maybe they'll just go away. And then he hears what sounds like footsteps outside, and then tapping begins on the side of his cabin. Not the front door anymore, like the wall of the cabin. Now it's a little bit louder. It's an elf and Tapping Krampus. continues up the side of the Elders. house, and then it stops. And he's sitting there, and he's thinking, whatever this is, is walking around my cabin. And then he hears tapping on the little slit that is the window that feeds into the bathroom that's right behind the bedroom that he's in right now. Oh. So six feet away, maybe 10 feet away, Whatever this thing is, it's now literally just a small pane of glass uh, away tapping on the glass. And so now he's petrified. And he's just hoping that this thing goes away. It doesn't. It goes to the other side of the cabin and starts tapping on the wall on the other uh, side. The and makes it all the way back to the front, where it begins tapping on the glass of the front window, back to the door. And he's just thinking, like, whatever this is, is walking around my cabin, tapping all over my cabin. And then all the tapping stops. And his heart's racing. You know, it's the middle of the night. He's, he's in the dude, middle of the woods I would, Dude, I would have a panic attack. Like, I would have a heart attack, dude. Oh. He's totally isolated. And then it's like his worst nightmare comes true. He hears footsteps on his balcony. And then tapping right on the big sliding glass doors of, of the door leading out to the balcony. And he knows that right behind a blackout curtain and a pane of glass is this tall man, more than likely, who's right on his balcony. The tapping on the balcony goes on and on. So anyway, I started blasting, dude. See, I feel like if you're in the woods, you need you need at least a shotgun, bro. Like like at least have a shotgun in the woods, bro, because you don't know what you're gonna come up against. You know what if you get a bear attack? What 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 if what if some wolves attack you? Like like you don't know what's happening, bro. You don't know what's in the woods. Oh god, why we got to see that? Dude, it's a scary video. Obviously, he has to add scary pictures. But like dude, it out yeah, anyway, I started blasting type shit. Like if you had a shotgun, just shoot the shotgun through the door. Start seeing taps on the window. It's out of my hand. And he's just waiting for it to Hey kid. Just the two time. Open the door. Open the door so and two come inside. 
but it doesn't. Instead, it goes on the roof, and it starts tapping on the roof directly above him. Amy, just send her a new email. It's fine. All night. And so finally, the sun comes up. You know, he hasn't slept all night. And he finally gets the courage to go over to the balcony and open up the curtains and see what's out there. And when he does, there is nothing out there, but there's footprints as if someone had been pacing on the balcony all night. He opens it up and he finally just jumps out and looks up on his roof. There's nothing on his roof. He can see all these footprints on his roof. He looks down and it's like a racetrack of footprints all around his house. Someone had been Bruh. basically stalking his house all night. And then the footsteps retreat all the way to the sitting tree and then go back into the woods. He packed up his stuff, he left, and he couldn't have been happier that the family sold that cabin because- What happened to the, wait, what happened to the other, like the people who bought it though? Because he was never gonna go back. So to this day, he has no idea what it was. And even if it was just a person who was tapping on your windows and your walls and your, and your roof and your balcony, even if it was just a human being doing that, that would be horrifying let alone if it was something else, something paranormal. And so if you wanna check out my video about my experience, it's on my channel called What I Saw in My Room Still Haunts Me. Um, it's eerily Should we watch that? one that I just described of the 17 year old in Oregon. And so I'd love to hear in the comments what you think was doing all- My parents one time made my brother go tap on my window at night to freak me out. That sounds like something my parents would do. That definitely sounds like something my parents would do. You were 10? Oh my god, dude. That's traumatizing. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribe? I'll thank you either way. You. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.